What about Jason Taylor? Well, it would appear that the Pro Football Hall of Famer is not going anywhere. Let's go. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The good news just keeps on rolling today. I am Alex Dono, your host. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and contributor to allhurricanes.com. And thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We are available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. So we talked in our morning episode about Kevin Beard being hired as the wide receivers coach. And on that episode, we also discussed further uncertainty and potential changes to the coaching staff, specifically on the defensive side of the football. Miami Hurricanes are looking for a new defensive ends coach to replace Rod Wright. Uh, There had been chatter over the weekend about a promotion for Pro Football Hall of Famer Jason Taylor, who's on the staff as an analyst, but... Monday and Tuesday, it started to hear some things through the grapevine linking Jason Taylor, who played the vast majority of his Hall of Fame career with the Miami Dolphins, linking him to a job with those Miami Dolphins. And if he were to be offered a job by the Dolphins, that would be a hard thing for a guy like him to pass up. Uh, So I was legitimately worried about losing Jason from the staff. Uh, I want him to stay on the staff. At all costs, I really want him to get that promotion to defensive ends coach because I think he can do a fantastic job there. And so here's the latest. Barry Jackson from the Miami Herald, who is very, very well connected in South Florida, uh, reliable reports about the Miami Dolphins, Miami Heat, and Miami Hurricanes. And in this case, two of those worlds colliding, right? The Dolphins and the Hurricanes. And Barry wrote this. Uh, today, Wednesday, about Jason Taylor. He says, though a report earlier this week linked UM analyst Jason Taylor to a job on the Dolphins staff, the expectation is that Taylor will remain with the Hurricanes, according to a source. He's likely to land a job on UM's coaching staff, according to a second source. UM's defensive end coaching position is open, he writes, after Rod Wright left for the Houston Texans. Taylor has interest in coaching. He did some of that informally in his role as a UM staff uh, analyst last season. Taylor, who was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2017, gosh, has it been that long already, has enjoyed his first year working at UM, and Coach Mario Cristobal values him. So not explicitly stated in that report that he's going to become the new defensive ends coach, but when you talk about the role expanding and about that second source saying that Jason Taylor would get an on-the-field role – I read between the lines there, although it's not explicitly stated in that report. I read between the lines, and I think Jason Taylor is going to become the next defensive ends coach at the University of Miami. And that was uh, reported as the likely scenario on Sunday by Gary Furman at Kane Sport, that JT could very well be the guy to replace Rod Wright. Um, Guys, I think this is fantastic. And I can say this as someone who covers the Miami Hurricanes, who's also a Hurricanes fan, and I also cover the Miami Dolphins, and I'm a Miami Dolphins fan. I get it that Jason Taylor's heart, I'm sure, is with that Miami Dolphins organization, but I feel at this moment he's probably needed more in Coral Gables than he's needed in Miami Gardens. I think Jason Taylor can do some amazing work helping mold the young defensive ends on Miami's roster. And also, it sounds to me like he's willing to put in the work to recruit. And, you know, Taylor's been working for Mario Cristobal for the past year. So he knows what goes into that grind that people on that staff have to do from a recruiting standpoint. And if Jason is willing to not only do that for another year, but actually expand his role, that tells me he's eager to recruit. Because, folks, I'm telling you, For someone like myself and many of you who listen to this and watch this do as well, for those of us who follow the recruiting trail very closely, how many times, probably in the dozens, can we recount stories from defensive recruits who have had a chance to speak with Jason Taylor on the phone or via 
Zoom or Skype or whatever, and just how starstruck and blown away that they are uh, by being able to speak to a pro football Hall of Famer. That's the sort of thing that resonates, and that's the sort of thing that can help you in recruiting, right? I mean, the potential, the potential that Jason Taylor has as a recruiting force down here and nationwide, right? Whether you're talking about all of you know the really good edge rushers that reside in South Florida and you know Miami brought in one of those in this class, Reuben Bain, who they're bringing in. I can't wait to see Jason Taylor working with Reuben Hurricane Bain. Uh, there's a lot of great prospects locally. There's a lot of great prospects nationwide. And having a Pro Football Hall of Famer on your staff and the guy, because Jason Taylor, let's not forget, Tom Brady – referred to Jason Taylor as the guy that he feared most, that this is the guy I despise going up against most. And Jason Taylor sacked Tom Brady more than any other defensive player sacked Brady in his career. Jason Taylor holds that distinction. So Taylor is someone who commands respect on the recruiting trail. He seems to enjoy putting in the work. And I think most importantly of all here, friends, um, he enjoys working with these young men. And I want to talk on the other side about – some of the players that I'm I'm really curious to see Jason Taylor coaching up because, uh, you know, you've seen enough of that video footage that's come out of Taylor putting his hand in the dirt, working hands on with Miami's defense events for as much as he was allowed to do. Because as an analyst, you know, his uh, his ability to spend time coaching players was limited. I think he did about as much as he was able to do uh, in that role on the staff. So if his role does get expanded. I think the possibilities here are endless. So we will talk about that right here on Locked on Canes. Right after we talk about the amazing folks at FanDuel. FanDuel Sportsbook, guys, they are absolutely changing the game. We're past the midway point of the NBA season now. It's the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. I mean, heck, we got the college basketball tournament coming up, the conference tournaments before that. New customers at FanDuel get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores to threes drained. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. So do not miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Thank you so much for making this special episode of Locked on Canes uh, your first or second listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. So Barry Jackson from the Miami Herald, who's one of the better reporters in South Florida, uh, says, uh, though an earlier report this week linked Jason Taylor to a job on the Dolphins staff, the expectation is that Taylor will remain with the Hurricanes He's likely to land a job on UM's coaching staff, according to his second source. So just to be clear on that, when you say, wait, isn't he already on the staff? So he's an analyst, which is not technically considered to be a coach. So he does work at UM. Mario Cristobal appreciates his work. I've been told that countless times that he and Cristobal actually seem to get along really, really well. And Cristobal appreciates uh, what Jason's been doing for the past year. So when you talk about landing a job on the coaching staff, that would be being elevated from an analyst role into actually a title like, say, defensive ends coach. So that's what we're, where we're at on that. And, guys, I look at two players in Miami's defensive end rotation that I really think can benefit most from Jason Taylor's guidance, right? Guys that have similar body types to what Jason had, similar backgrounds athletically to what Jason had. And if he's able to harness the techniques and the wisdom that he was able to use to develop a pro football hall of fame career, if he's able to harness that, put that in a bottle and teach it to others, really exciting things could be happening down in Coral Gables. First guy that I'm going to remind you of is Cyrus Moss heading into his second year, red shirted last year, he was a little un undersized you know who else was undersized when he was in college jason taylor uh and that's undersized in weight not in length because taylor always had that basketball type of build like cyrus moss does six foot five uh, i'm not sure how much if any weight moss has put on since last year but coming out of high school bishop gorman in las vegas he was listed six five two fifteen so i hope he's like you know maybe 225 by the time this season starts but you know 
didn't get on the field last year because he just didn't have like the girth and the strength yet. Uh, but the technique is there because I watched Cyrus Moss at the spring game last year and he did pretty well. So I know that he's got the makings of a great defensive end. It's the reason why he was a four-star recruit coming out of high school. And this is the type of guy who's got that sort of similar athletic profile and similar build to what Jason Taylor had. And I think this is the type of young man that can really benefit from his coaching. Um, and so, you know, you have to take a leap of faith that Taylor can be the guy. He can be the one to bring that sort of development out of a guy like Cyrus Moss. And it's not like, you know, the Hurricanes just pulled JT out of the Hall of Fame last year. and Like, hey, why don't you give coaching a try? Uh, Jason Taylor was working with high school players for the previous five years before he arrived at the University of Miami. He was on the St. Thomas Aquinas staff, uh, started out as a, a defensive line coach, and then was the last few years before arriving at Miami was the defensive coordinator at St. Thomas Aquinas, one of the premier high school football programs uh, in the area, really in the country, I, I would imagine. Uh, so, you know, Taylor is is used to working and developing, you know, young defensive ends and defensive players. So he does have some experience and a good reputation in that regard. So I, I can't wait to see what Jason can do with Cyrus Moss. And then the other big one, uh, you know, not to neglect any of Miami's defensive ends because they can all benefit from Jason Taylor. But if I'm looking at the diamond in the rough type of guys, Collins or Chiampong, he needs to become Jason's project. And I would encourage Collins as well, uh, who we're huge fans of on the show, um, reach out to Jason if you don't hear from him first, right? I mean, if you guys are calling each other at the same time, that's fine. But make sure you reach out to Jason because, again, a Chiampong, six foot seven, athleticism through the roof, just doesn't have a whole lot of experience playing American football. So he's, he's really a diamond in the rough. Um, if he becomes a project of Jason Taylor and if he works with him uh, as much as they're allowed to actually be in physical contact with one another, Jason Taylor can help the four star recruit out of Southern California by way of Ghana. Ghana is where Collins grew up. Uh, Jason could really turn him into something special. So they, they need to seek out that coaching and guidance and wisdom because I'm always reminded of something uh, with Jason Taylor you know, shortly after his football career came to an end and he started to get close to the Dolphins organization, you know, closer even after retirement. Uh, you remember in 2013, the Miami Dolphins drafted Deion Jordan, which ended up being a colossal bust at third overall, right? Deion Jordan, he had substance issues, substance abuse and all that stuff, but the Dolphins drafted Deion Jordan defensive end and Deion Jordan kept getting compared to Jason Taylor, right? He's got that sort of body type and impact on games. This guy can be the Jason Taylor for the next generation with the Miami Dolphins. And I can remember Jason telling this story, you know, a decade ago, a little less than that, about how he would always try to, like, set up meetings and training sessions. I want to get with Deion Jordan one-on-one. -on -one. I want to work with him and – Apparently, Dion blew him off. Apparently, Dion Jordan was, you know, not interested in, in taking that wisdom. Now, Taylor was not actually a member of the coaching staff. So Dion Jordan was not required to work with Jason the way that, you know, Miami's players would be, the Hurricanes players would be required to work with JT if he gets that promotion. But go the extra mile, right? If you're a Miami Hurricanes defensive end, whether you're Jaden Wayne or Ruben Bain, or Akeem Mesidor, who's got a ton of experience, but, you know, obviously you're never too old to benefit from coaching, especially when you're still in the college ranks. Uh, you know, Nigel Lee Kelly, who's an absolute freak in the making, he can benefit a lot from JT's coaching. All these guys, um, just take advantage of it. If, if Jason Taylor does, in fact, stay on the staff, as is being reported, and if he gets that promotion, as is being reported, I hope every defensive end on the Miami roster, you go the extra mile. I'm sure Jason will go the extra mile with you. So make sure you at least meet him in the middle because I think he can do so much to help develop the careers of these young men. And uh, I think Jason is absolutely needed, probably more on this Hurricane staff than he is on the Dolphins defensive staff. And I know he's appreciated. He's appreciated by me. He's appreciated by my audience. You guys, the last couple of days, You've been blowing it out with the hashtag promote JT promote JT looks like it's finally happening. My friends. And I know he's appreciated is Jason by Mario Cristobal as well. So yeah, thank you guys so much 
for taking the time to soak up another episode of Locked on Canes. I want to throw a shout out to the newest five star review that we've gotten on Apple Podcasts. So if you guys, if you listen to the audio version of the show, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey app, make sure if you if you can and if you want to take a little time to leave us a five star review because we really appreciate getting those and we try to shout you guys out when we get one we'll get one of those. So we got a new one that came in a couple days ago from a user named ESPLS who says, uh, "Dono, your insight is relentless." <laughs> Much appreciated, my friend, with a five-star rating. Uh, I think relentless, because we do this every day, sometimes twice a day. Relentless is a good way to describe Locked on Kane. So good vocabulary choice by you, ESPLS, and we appreciate you listening. So if you guys want to leave us a five-star review, those are very welcomed. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Make sure you leave the thumbs up. Smash that like button before you go. And we will talk to you again tomorrow on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.